My name is Jay Legate. All my life, I've been fascinated by wildlife and the outdoors. Now, I'm at Mountain Home Air Force Base. To me, it seems this is a place that most people dread being stationed. They cite lack of things to do, boring, arguably ugly scenery, and terrible weather. In the time that I've spent here, however, I found that it's a place full of mystery, adventure, and hidden beauty. A videographer by trade, I'm making it my mission to experience as much as I can in a single summer and show my fellow airmen that there really is something for everyone in this rugged landscape. Idaho is the seventh least densely populated state, while being the 14th largest. From its desert grasslands to alpine tundra, rocky canyons to mountain glaciers, more than 60% of Idaho is public land waiting to be explored. Mountain Home Air Force Base sits in the middle of the Snake River Plain, the flat, dry, kidney-shaped basin in the southern half of Idaho. This area was carved out extensively during the Bonneville Flood, when the ancient Lake Bonneville breached its natural dam, releasing a 400-foot-high wall of water which swept through the Snake River Plain as it drained into the Pacific Ocean, and is largely responsible for the canyons and sand deposits in the area. One of the more notable remnants of this prehistoric catastrophe is actually much closer than you'd probably think. On my way to the Owyhee Mountains, I want to stop and see a hint of the sheer scope of this land-shaping event. Sitting in the center of a small basin where the winds create a perfect repository for the tons of sand left behind by the flood, sits the tallest single sand dune in North America. At 470 feet, its sheer size makes it a sight to see, but Bruno Dunes State Park does a good job of showcasing more than its namesake. The, the sand dunes is obviously the main attraction, hence the name Bruno Dunes State Park. They were formed about uh, 20,000 years ago, they, they figure, when the Bonneville Dam broke. Mm. They figure that this cove was a big churning eddy for about three weeks to a month. When it, when it drained out, all the sand was deposited here. The desert, grassland, and marsh habitats all nestled into the relatively small park can give visitors plenty of ways to spend their time. This is our big lake here. We also have another lake behind the uh, observatory. Now, this is a good lake for swimming. It's got a lot of the good beach area. The small lake is the, the best one that you're going to find for the fishing, both bluegill and bass. With so many habitats in such close quarters, there's an abundance of wildlife in the park. Keep an eye out for snakes, but rest assured that there is only one venomous species in this part of the state, the Great Basin Rattlesnake. Bruno Dunes State Park offers amenities for both tent and RV camping, just a short walk from the dunes. We have about 118 camping sites that range from uh, very primitive all the way up to full service campsites. Um, as, you can, as you can imagine in the summertime it slows down a little bit with how, how hot we can get, yeah. but the spring and the fall camping here when everything else is either closing down or just starting up can be really pleasant. Day trippers can scale the dunes or hike around and be rewarded with pristine views of this unique environment and its varied wildlife. Just be sure to pack plenty of water as temperatures in the basin can soar to the triple digits. The park is home to two small lakes open to fishing and swimming, which breathe life into the harsh desert landscape. They're also a great way to cool off in the hot summer sun. So aside from the massive sand dune, another of the park's main attractions is its observatory. Boasting a 25-inch Newtonian reflector telescope, visitors can come from all over to get a view of the night sky like they've never seen before. That's an excellent program. Uh, we have an, a, a great night's, night sky here with very little light pollution. It offers uh, really good night viewing. Or enjoy a nighttime scorpion hike to view the more colorful side of these interesting arachnids. The Sawtooth Mountains to the north and the Owyhee Mountains to the south create a vast valley through southern Idaho with the Snake River at its heart. Imagine this entire plain being underwater as it was for a period of several months as Lake Bonneville drained into the ocean. This ties into another summer activity, popular in washes and canyons of the Owyhee Mountain foothills. In Idaho being the gym state, we've got uh, more gemstones that can be found you know, here locally. Uh, within usually two to three hour drive, you can be in some pretty uh, amazing areas. All right, so how'd you get into like doing rock and stuff? Yeah. Part of it was uh, when we first came to Idaho, it was one of the things that I had taken in college and uh, just didn't really realize that there was that much going on you know, in Idaho. Fossils, minerals, and gemstones can be found by anyone with a keen eye while out on a weekend hike or ride. And you found all these ones you found? 
Absolutely. Yep, this is from uh, Reynolds Creek over in the Owyhees, which you were talking about. Uh, that one happened to be found uh, just a couple days ago up at the Dismal Swamp. And then the, uh, we just recently made a trip up to uh, Emerald Creek and you know, found uh, quite a few pounds of uh, material from there. You can also try your luck at gold panning and see if you're able to strike it rich. Outdoor recreation hosts horseback rides, hikes, and other events in the area, so there's no excuse to miss out on these literal hidden gems. The Owyhee Mountains may look uninspiring from a distance. In fact, from the base, they're the better part of an hour away. But as you scale the foothills and work your way up to the peaks with lush forests and alpine meadows, their size becomes much more impressive. War Eagle Mountain is easily accessible, and like much of Idaho, is mostly public land. You can camp in a rocky desert canyon near a lightly wooded stream, falling asleep to the sounds of coyotes, or drive an extra 15 minutes and suddenly be surrounded by spruce and fir trees, letting the chirps of chorus frogs lull you to sleep. There are many routes into the Owyhee Mountains, but one specifically piques my interest. There's essentially one viable road that leads into Silver City. Silver City was founded shortly after silver was discovered in the Owyhee Mountains. At its heyday in the 1880s, this place was home to almost 2,500 people. Today, however, this sleepy town is home to only a handful of residents year-round. It's a stark reminder of changing times. As is the fate of most mining towns, eventually the veins were exhausted and the population dwindled, and as people moved on, they left behind artifacts and relics. These, along with those left behind by Native Americans before them, should be enjoyed, but also respected. There's a lot of uh, Native American artifacts, arrowheads, pottery, things like that, but there's also a lot of historic artifacts. Uh, cans, bottles, uh, old parts of wagons, those sorts of things. And the important thing for people to remember is, is that those are protected items. You can't take them, you can't destroy them. And, and there's some good reasons for that, is that those, those artifacts tell a story about who's been here, how they've used the landscape, and it's history for everybody. It's a selfish act to take those artifacts. It's truly a unique place. The atmosphere is peaceful and serene, and leaves you with a feeling of having escaped the tempo of modern life. Hike the mountains, camp in the backcountry, or go on a guided horseback ride, back in time to the area's rich history. From prehistoric deserts to modernized ghost towns, Owyhee County's vast emptiness holds plenty of secrets that anyone can stumble upon.